Today we're going to prove an astounding identity that is due to Ramanujan and we're going to follow the strategy from this paper by Han and Hirshhorn. So well let's look at what we have here. So we want to define three sequences of numbers a n b n n and c n by the following expansions of power series. So if we expand the power series 1 plus 53x plus 9x squared over 1 minus 82x minus 82x squared plus x cubed, then the coefficients in that expansion will be defined to be a sub n. And then likewise, if we expand this power series, notice the denominator is the same, but now the numerator is 2 minus 26x minus 12x squared. That'll define the sequence bn. And finally, if we expand this one down here, which has numerator 2 plus 8x minus 10x cubed, that will define the sequence cn. Then what we have is a sub n cubed plus b sub n cubed equals c sub n cubed plus minus 1 to the n. Okay, so let's see how we might get started proving this identity. So we're going to start with a pretty crazy identity involving sixth degree polynomials. So let's look at the following observation. And we're not going to like look at all of the details that would prove this. It's really just a kind of a long calculation. So what we have is that u squared plus 7uv minus 9v squared cubed. So we're going to cube that entire thing plus 2u squared minus 4uv and then plus 12v squared cubed is in fact equal to 2u squared plus 10v squared cubed and then plus u squared minus 9uv minus v squared cubed. So, you know, this identity would just involve some albeit long, but fairly elementary calculations to prove. So we're not going to do that here. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is define what I'll call an accessory sequence, which will in turn be used to define our final sequences a, n, b, n, and c, n. And that'll be d, n, which uh, is defined by the following rules. So d of 0 is 0, d of 1 is 1, and then d of n plus 2 is 9, dn plus 1, plus dn. So this is a Fibonacci-like sequence. And now we're going to look at the following claim, which will prove part of it via induction. And that is that we have dn plus 1 squared minus 9 dn plus 1 times dn, minus dn squared is equal to minus 1 to the n, but that's also equal to dn plus 1 squared minus dn times dn plus 2. Okay, so we're in fact just going to prove the left half of this identity, which I'm underlining in green, and then I'll leave it to you if you'd like to prove the right half of this identity, which I'm overlining in blue. So you can use a similar strategy to what we're doing, which is a proof by induction. Okay, so let's get to the proof here. We're going to skip the base case because it's fairly self-evident. You just plug in n equals zero and you see that it works out. And so let's suppose we have some k value bigger than or equal to zero where this identity holds. So we have dk plus 1 minus 9 dk plus 1 times dk minus dk squared is in fact equal to minus 1 to the k. And then now what we'll do is consider the next case. So that'll be this left hand side of our equation that we want to prove holds with k replaced with k plus 1. So that'll give us dk plus 2 squared minus 9 dk plus 2 times dk and then minus dk squared. So something like that. Now what I'll do is, well, 
fix this typo that I have. That should be k plus two, and those both should be k plus one because of my replacements. And now let's replace dk plus two using our recursion. So that means we're gonna have nine dk plus one plus dk squared using the recursion and the fact that that's being squared, and then minus nine times nine dk plus one plus dk, all multiplied into dk plus one and then minus dk plus one squared. So that's what we get in the end there. Okay, so now what I'll do is perhaps use the opportunity to factor out a nine dk plus one plus dk from the first two terms and that's gonna leave us nine dk plus one plus dk minus nine dk plus one, and then we have a minus dk plus one squared. So again, we factored it out of this, but that's a square, so that leaves one of them left over. We factored out of this, but that's gonna leave this minus nine times dk plus one. But now let's observe that this term right here and this term right here will cancel kind of nicely. And then after resorting things, we see we have minus dk plus one squared and then plus nine dk times dk plus one and then plus dk squared. That's from expanding out this first bit. But let's observe that that's a minus sign attached to exactly this expression right here, meaning that's minus times minus one to the k or minus one to the k plus one. But that's where we needed that to end up to prove this statement by induction. Okay, nice. So now what I wanna do is move on towards defining our sequences a n, b n, and c n via this sequence d n. Thanks for sticking around this long in the video. If you're enjoying it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, make sure and subscribe. It really would help the channel out. Okay, so now let's define these new sequences. So let's define a n via the following uh, expression involving this d n sequence. So it'll be d n plus one squared plus seven times dn plus one times dn minus nine dn squared. So let's observe that it looks like this stuff right here where u is dn plus one and v is dn. And we're going to continue that with these next two bits as well. So let's define bn as Let's see, two dn plus one squared minus four dn plus one times dn plus 12 times dn squared. And finally, we'll define cn as two dn plus one squared plus 10 dn squared. Okay, nice. And now I'd like to observe the following, and this follows pretty quickly via this claim that we just proved, or I guess maybe like the two claims that we have built into this one thing with the green part and the blue part. Then we see that a n cubed plus b n cubed, well, let's just put that into this equation up here. Notice a n cubed looks a lot like this. b n cubed looks a lot like this. So that's gonna give us this expression cubed, but that's c n cubed. So cn cubed plus this expression right here cubed. But notice that that expression right there cubed is exactly this left-hand side of the claim equation that we just proved. So this is gonna be minus one to the, well, let's see, it's gonna be three n, but of course, minus one to the three n is simply minus one to the n because multiplying by three will not change the parity of a number. So that means that these sequences over here satisfy the condition that we wanted to show they satisfied here. Now we just have to also show that they can be represented via the power series expansion of these rational functions. Okay, so let's get to that. So let's also note the following, and that is if we take a n plus one, that's gonna be the same thing as what? Well, it's gonna be dn plus two squared 
plus seven dn plus two times dn plus one minus dn plus one squared, just simply by replacing all the n's with n plus one. But now what we can do is rewrite this in kind of a clever way. So let's observe that if we were to expand all of this out, perhaps using the recursion that is defining the dn terms, and then using our blue and green identities, that's gonna be equivalent to the following. So 63 times dn plus one squared, plus seven times dn plus one times dn, and then minus nine times dn squared, and then plus 104 times two dn plus one squared, minus four dn plus one times dn, and then finally plus 12 dn squared, but we're not done yet. We have to subtract 68 times, what is it? 2 dn plus 1 squared plus 10 dn squared. But if you look carefully at that, that's our expressions a n, b n, and c n. So that's equal to 63 a n um, plus 104 b n minus 68 c n. So that gives us this nice recursion for this a n plus one, not in terms of the d n sequences, but in terms of the a n, b n, and c n sequences, which are kind of nicer because, well, first of all, we get a linear recursion instead of this quadratic recursion. And then you can do similar things for a or for b n plus one and c n plus one, but we'll jump to that at the top of the next board. We just got done arguing that our sequences a n, b n, and c n satisfied this like system of recurrences between them. That was a linear system. Now we also proved that they satisfy this rule down here. Now we just have to prove that they are in fact the expansion coefficients for these power series. So let's get to that. So here I'm going to define capital A of X to be the power series with coefficients a n and similar for capital B X and capital C X. And now I'd like to observe the following about a of X. So I can write that as one plus the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a n plus one times x to the n plus one. So what I did there is I extracted the first term out, the constant term, and then after that, I re-indexed it to start back at zero. So next up, what I wanna do is take one of these x's and pull them out like that. And then finally, the next thing that I wanna do is replace a n plus one with these a n, b n, and c n. So that's gonna give me one plus x times the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of 63 an times x to the n, and then plus 104 times bn times x to the n, minus 68 times cn times x to the n. Great, and then what I can do from there is, well, maybe split that into three sums, factor the coefficients out, and observe that that's gonna gain me those two or those three functions over there. So this is gonna be one plus x times a of x, or sorry, that should be plus 63 times x times a of x, and then plus 104 times x times b of x minus 68 times x times c of x. But let's observe that I can rewrite that in the following way. And that would be what? Well, I've got one minus 63x times a of x, and then minus 104x times b of x, plus 68 times c of x equals the number one. That's just from moving some things around. And then I can do a very, very similar calculation for bx and cx. I'll let you fill in the details but that'll leave me minus 60, 64 a of x, and then plus one minus 104 x times b of x, 
And then finally, plus 67 times c of x equals two. It's equal to two here instead of one because two is the starting coefficient for b of x. Then let's see, what's the last thing that we can get for c of x? So we'll have minus 80x times a of x, and then minus 131x times b of x. And then next up, plus one plus 85x times c of x equals two. Then if we step back a little bit, we see that we have a system of equations where our coefficients are these polynomials and our variables are these power series. So in fact, we could write this as a matrix equation if we wanted to. It would look something like this. One minus 63x goes here, minus 104x goes here, 68x goes here, and then let's see, minus 64x here, one minus 104x here, 67x here, minus an 80x in this entry, minus 131x in this entry, and one plus 85x in this entry. That's multiplied into the vector made up of these functions, ax, bx, cx, and that's gonna be equal to this vector one, two, two. So we've got this matrix vector equation. And this is where I'm gonna stop writing things because we're actually home free here. So now what we can do is find the inverse of this three by three matrix, multiply it into this vector over here on the right hand side, simplify everything, and what you'll see is that that will imply that our function a of x is equal to this rational function over here on the right, our function b of x is equal to this rational function. Our function c of x is equal to this rational function. And in fact, you might say, well, where did the, these denominators come from? Well, those denominators are in fact related to the determinant of this matrix right here. In fact, they're exactly equal to the determinant of this matrix. And that's a good place to stop.